Today, I've got a champion oil filter teardown for you. I got a specific request for this model number from one of you in the comments, so if you make your own requests, I will likely see it, so feel free to do that. So, the price on this guy is $13.36, and depending on the OE recommended oil change interval for your vehicle, this filter will last up to 12,000 miles between oil changes. Taking a look at the sticker on the side of the filter, you can see that this part was made in Mexico, and here you've got the Federal Mogul Motorsports name. Now they used to own the Champion brand, but they don't any longer. If you head over to the product page for this particular filter, which I have linked below, you will land on a web page that uh, will have a Drive logo, D-R-I-V. They are now the owners of the Champion brand, just FYI. So regarding the filter itself, filters for this application range from about 220 grams to just over 350, and this guy falls in the middle at about 298. On the underside, the combined inlet area of these eight inlet holes is about... 0.53 square inches, which for reference is nearly twice that of a crossover Mobile One or Royal Purple. The gasket is made from silicone, and it appears to be identical to what you get on the K&N Performance Gold, and the similarities don't end there. You can see both of these tapping plates look nearly identical, save for the orientation of the center hole identifier, so the 20 is indicative of the thread size, which is an M20 by 1.5. So I wasn't surprised after noticing the similarities that this k &N filter was also made in Mexico, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if it was made by the same group of people. So taking a look at the inside reveals a non-wire-backed media made from a synthetic blend that is 99% efficient at capturing particles 20 microns in diameter or larger. There are 55 pleats, that are fairly evenly spaced, save for this region here where the two end pieces are glued together. The total filtration area is a bit over 86 square inches, based on the exposed width versus the total length. So that's where I got this 86.24 uh, value from, and that's only so precise, so about 86. And that is pretty typical. I've seen total filter areas for Filters for this application range anywhere from 65 up to a bit over 100 square inches. So this is uh, mid-80s is, is definitely fair. So I checked two things when it comes to the glue that holds the media to the end caps, uh, which are metal in, in this filter. I checked that there's an adequate amount of glue, which there is on both ends of the end caps, but I also checked to make sure that it's not globbing over the edges or getting places where it shouldn't be, and this filter is good in both of those regards. The center tube is made from steel, and it's got two of the features that I like to see for strength. One is the helical seam, and two are the louvers that are, I'd say, rolled in such a way that they add to the rigidity because they add thickness. They also don't require that any steel material be removed, which you'd have to discard and worry about getting into things as part of the manu manufacturing process. So if you compare that to the center tube from an Amsoil, you can see that it's not nearly as rigid because it's got the axial seam and the openings that don't really add to the thickness. So the Champion is definitely superior in that regard. The emergency bypass valve has a very rigid support here, save for where I nicked it when I was <laughs> cutting it open, but it's got a very rigid support. The poppet is made from plastic, which is a pretty, one of the two most common designs, so not much to say there other than that. I'm just impressed with how robust it is. Flipping it over, you can see the coil spring that is meant to push against the inside of the case and hold the cartridge down against the anti-drain back valve. This guy, um, the only thing that's outstanding about it versus anything else I've seen before is that the bottom is captured pretty tightly inside of this track here, which may not be necessary, but I like that it can give you confidence that it's not going to walk off center. So that was kind of a cool little plus there. Speaking of the anti-drain back valve, it is made from silicone like the gasket was, and it's got the Parker name on the underside, and it looks like it was made from a pretty well-built tool because I see almost no flashing. There might be a little bit on the inside here if you can see that, but 
overall, this is a very clean valve. And lastly, we've got the case. Cases usually come in one of two thicknesses, and this is the thicker of the two at 20 thousandths of an inch versus uh, the thinner, which is 15 usually. So in summary, how would I rate this Champion filter from a build quality perspective? Well, there isn't a single component that I would say is chintzy or below average. It looks like there's no spot where I would say they tried to cut corners to save costs. They just did a good job on their material selection for the, the silicone valve and gasket instead of nitrile. They have a, a solid steel center tube, the thicker case. They've got a, a decent quality filter media that has a, a fair amount of surface area to it. The glue was applied adequately and in a, in a clean manner. So would I recommend this filter from a build quality perspective? Absolutely. So it's just mainly a matter of price. If you can find it for a good price, I would not hesitate to put it on my vehicle if I were you. So anyway, that's all I've got. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because it helps me be able to do more videos like this. And if you have any cut up requests, again, feel free to leave those in the comments because I definitely read them. And that's why, again, I did this video here. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.